Now in this video today, what I'm gonna do is kick things off. Tomorrow I'm getting chopped up by Game Changer, but what I figured I'd do is basically break this out into different series to explain exactly what I do before a haircut as well as during a haircut and after a haircut, you know what I'm saying? So this video today is gonna be about what should you do before getting a haircut because I know a lot of people typically hit me up, but I figured I'd make a standalone video just so people can easily find a what should you do before you get a haircut video, you know what I'm saying? So, all right, now another thing that I'm gonna do is link a video right above. This is my Sicko Mode Remix version, you know what I'm saying, of me doing the washing style 3.0. Now, the reason why we call it 3.0, typically when it comes to methods, no method is gonna work for everybody the same exact way because we all live in different parts of the world, different climates, we all have different hair textures, different curl patterns, different density, all of that stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? The water in your area may be hard, the water in your area may be soft water, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, these methods are simply made to be able to help give you a guideline so you can take it and then tweak it and make it work the best for you. So with that being said, let me show you the products that I'm gonna be using and some of the things that you can use as well. Now, when it comes to the shampoo and the conditioner, y'all already know I'm gonna be using the Legion Saucy Wash Shampoo, and then I'm gonna be using the cleansing co uh, conditioner that goes hand in hand with it. Now, one thing I wanna point out is the owner actually created a coupon code just in time. If you buy anything over $15, I believe this combo is $16 together. If you buy anything over $15, you get $5 off, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, these are the two products I'm gonna be using in regards to cleansing my hair. I'm gonna be using the Cricut Carbon Comb, and I'll make sure I put the link in the description where you can cap this bad boy. And then like I always say, whenever I'm doing this method, I use a hard brush to be able to define my pattern. You can use any hard brush that you want. This is an OG Torino Pro. This bad boy is extra hard, you know? So the reason why I'm using this is because my hair is a lot thicker. When I comb it back, you guys are gonna see my hair is very long and it's very thick. So I need something to be able to get all the way to the roots of my hair to be able to help define my pattern. And then the last thing that you gotta be able to use is I'm gonna use one of my compression caps from Monsoon. This helps me be able to rinse out the product from my hair. And then I'm gonna follow it up with a do-rag, you know? So, all right, just to be able to answer the question. Some people may say, why would you want to wash your hair before a cut? I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot of people that love watching haircut videos, and I'm pretty sure you've seen videos of waivers that have gone on a very long, extreme wolf or whatever the case is, and when the barber's cutting their hair, they either have products in their hair, their hair is dirty, it's a whole bunch of dandruff, uh, dead skin cells and all that stuff like that. So on camera, when they're cutting their hair, you can see all of the stuff that comes out of that hair and that's just nasty. A lot of people don't understand that it's actually better for you to wash your hair before. The main reason why, and a lot of barbers will feel me on this, you don't want to go to the shop and have a whole bunch of products in your hair. Now, the only thing that I would recommend that you have in your hair are light oils or a very light leave-in conditioner, you know what I'm saying? But the reason why I do this the day before my cut, I don't care too much about my hair bouncing back and all of that stuff like that. I care more about making sure that my hair is properly moisturized because typically after a cut, I can go anywhere between four to seven days without having to wash my hair because it's properly moisturized is not itching and everything like that. And I'm gonna make a follow-up video in regards to the things that I do after a cut because I'm pretty sure some people are wondering, well, dang, you don't even cut your hair after, but you think uh, going to the shop and all that stuff is nasty. I'm gonna get into all those details, but to spare you guys, let's get into this wash. All right, now the first step is to simply comb your pattern out. After you finish combing your hair, all you have to do is take some warm water, put it through your hair and everything like that. Make sure you get all of your hair wet and then go through and apply the shampoo the first time through. All right, now with the first application of shampoo, your hair may not lather up a lot because you have dirt in your hair, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you just do it for the first time. So you basically take it like that. You know 
and if necessary, you can take the shampoo and then just swirl it around like this. Now after your first application of shampoo, all you do is simply rinse it out with warm water. All right, now after you rinse your hair and everything like that, the second application of shampoo, you basically brush your hair in the desired pattern that you're trying to achieve when it comes to your wave pattern. The second time around, you don't need as much shampoo. <laughs> Now, before I start brushing my hair, what I try to do is just simply take some cold water to, to wet the bristles of my brush up, and then I start brushing in the desired pattern. So I put some cold water on the bristles, and then you just go to work. One thing I do want to say is when you're brushing your hair, you do not have to brush extremely hard. What you want to do is basically use the hard brush as if it's a rake and basically just try to pull only your hairs. You can place the bristles on your scalp, but you don't want to apply too much pressure on your scalp with a hard brush, especially when your hair is wet. You know what I'm saying? The hard brush is basically used as a detangler brush when you're washing your hair and you'll be able to see that it detangles your hair, it lines your waves up, and it allows you to be able to see exactly how your waves are forming. Once you're done brushing with shampoo, make sure you rinse out the shampoo out of your bristles with cold water. If you need to, you may have to use lukewarm water because some shampoos, they stay on the bristles and they make the bristles soft. All right, now when it comes to rinsing out, you want to make sure you get all of the shampoo out of your hair because if you have any shampoo remaining, it'll strip your hair and it'll make your hair a lot more dry and brittle. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the reasons why I like doing the washing style 3.0 because at the end of the day, Typically when people do the normal washing style, they put a stocking cap on after the second application of shampoo. And sometimes when you're trying to rinse that stuff out, you don't get all the shampoo out. It makes your hair dry. It makes your hair brittle and everything like that. It's harder to bounce back, you know what I'm saying? But for me, the next step is the most important because what it does is when you condition your hair, it gives your hair the moisturizing properties that it needs. And depending on what conditioner you use, it'll allow your hair to be able to lay and at the same time, it just protects your hair because what most people don't understand, shampoos alter your pH balance level and everything like that, and then the conditioner resets it, you know? So that's the reason why typically with the Shea Moisture product lines, the first shampoo will basically strip your hair and then the, the conditioner will restore it, you know what I'm saying? Now, one thing I wanna say is before I apply the Legion Sauce conditioner and everything like that, one of the reasons why I like this product, not only is it an all natural product, but at the end of the day, you can use this product as a leave-in conditioner conditioner. All right, so I'm basically going to take the Legion Sauce conditioner and you can take as much as you want or feel that you need. You know what I'm saying? I'm basically going to apply this much because I am going to be styling my hair. Rub it in your hands just like that. And then simply pat it all around your pattern just to make sure you get an even distribution of the product onto your hair. You don't want to put all of it in your crown and then you don't have any of the product anywhere near your edges. All right, once you get it evenly distributed on the top level of your hair, what I always do is I take another application of it like this, I rub it into my hands again, but then this time I'm only gonna apply it mainly in my crown area. And the main reason why is because we brush out from our crowns whenever it comes to having swirls or beehives or whatever the case is. So you wanna have a little bit more conditioner in, in your crown area to be able to give you a little bit better lay and just distribution all throughout the rest of your head. When you start brushing, if you don't have enough conditioner in your crown, you can brush most of the conditioner out of your crown area and everything like that. And you really don't want to go with this. So with that being said, what I'm going to do is style my hair. Alright, once you are done brushing and styling your hair, make sure...
make sure you rinse the bristles of your brush out with either cold or lukewarm water. You know what I'm saying? If you loop, if you use lukewarm water, make sure that the water only hits the bristles and not the face of the brush. All right, now after that, I'm gonna take my monsoon cap like this, put it over my head, and then rinse my hair out as much as possible with cold water. All right, now one thing I do want to say, when it comes to rinsing your hair out, cold water is great for being able to rinse your hair out and to help your hair kind of lock in a lot of that moisture and everything like that. But one thing I want to give a disclaimer on is sometimes whenever you're doing a washing style, some people think that, oh, when they shampoo their hair and they rinse it out, if they use cold water, that gives them a benefit. That's actually the worst thing that you can do. You know what I'm saying? Now, the reason why I can use cold water when it comes to the Legion Sauce Conditioner is mainly because not only is it a natural product, but at the same time, the conditioner can serve as a leave-in conditioner. So even if I don't get all of it out of my hair, it's not gonna damage my hair or my scalp, you know what I'm saying? And that's one of the main reasons why I like doing the Washing Style 3.0. Now, just to recap, if you choose to use shampoo or other products, you know what I'm saying, not all store-bought conditioners you can leave in your hair. So you need to understand which products that you're using if they can be left in your hair because if they can't, if it's like a shampoo or something, you want to make sure you use warm water, lukewarm water, or whatever the case is to make sure you get all of it out your hair. Cold water is not going to strip everything from your hair, you know what I'm saying? But because this product can be used as a leave-in conditioner, that's the reason why I use cold water. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and rinse my hair. Now, one thing I want to mention is when it comes to the monsoon caps, the reason why I like using these bad boys, and I'll make sure I put a link down below, is because I put it on my head like this, but whenever I'm rinsing my hair, just like I showed you guys on, on a sicko mode video, I simply fold it down like this, and I try to pull it all the way down to be able to rinse out as much hair as possible. Previously, if you only have a stocking cap and it covers up all this part right here, you're going to miss your edges and everything like that, but with the monsoon cap, because the material is breathable it allows me to be able to rinse off as much as my head as possible and then I can pull it further down like that to be able to rinse all of my hair you know what I'm saying so that's basically what I'm about to do right now so y'all just stay tuned all right so once you get done with the rinsing step basically the last thing I'm gonna do is make sure I keep this on my head for as long as possible until my hair dries now once my hair is dry sometimes what I do is I'll put a do-rag on top of it and then follow it up with a stocking cap and everything like that you know what I'm saying the main reason why is because sometimes if you leave a stocking cap on your head too, too long, I don't know about you guys, but if you have curly hair like myself, whenever I take a stocking cap off sometimes, what it will do is it will lift up my hair and have it looking all kind of crazy. But if I take this off as soon as it dries and, and replace it with a do-rag with a stocking cap, then I don't have to worry about that, you know what I'm saying? So, but with that being said, that's the end of this video. It's your boy, J. Lou. Salute. On my body, black leather interior. Since they got the keys, ace time criteria. Flow so cold, nickname Siberia. Waivers think they killing when they really are inferior. Almost like killing waivers. How you get that tripe? How you claim to be a lead, but you ain't got no life? What seems hard to y'all is done overnight.